At this point, I am going to introduce Dr. Riko Gerlich, and he's going to take it from here. Thank you for coming. Oh, I have here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. First of all, I'm not doctor. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to explain for 23 years here that I'm not a doctor. I'm just film director. So, who I am? I am someone who wrote all my 12 feature films with someone or alone. I co-wrote or wrote six features for other directors, million my own documentary films, and so on and so on. So I have little experience, and when Dr. Sun asked me what I want to talk about, I said, let's talk a little bit about script writing. Because, and I will start with one strange information which every year appears in some film industrial magazine in this country that they are counting that every year around 100,000 new scripts arrive to Hollywood. So just to Hollywood. And I found that that's the truth when I was second year here and one waiter asked me if I want to read her script. <laughs> so that's the really how it spread all around and how everyone has a story and everyone would like to see his or her story on the big screen. <laughs> Today I will try to talk just about the process which I recently passed making a film under the title Big Constitution. Uh, if we can have a little something on the screen can we have something on the screen? No? No? Just a second, we'll try to solve this problem. I would like to show you just trailer, which is like two minutes, just to have some kind of visual elements, what I'm talking about. So. Okay. It's not working. Don't. So it's a feature film. It's placed in Croatia, in uh, home, my hometown, Zagreb. It's a capital on one very small country of four and million, half million inhabitants. And it's a huge history there on Balkans. As you know, last war was 20 years, 25 years ago. Every 50 to 30 years, some kind of war appeared there. Churchill used to say that that's the part of the world which produced too much history. <laughs> so living in such a country, very often your films are connected with reality. So this one, which I co-wrote with young writer, very famous locally, uh, writer with a lot of very successful books. And this is a script number four that we co-wrote together. And it's based on some our experience with hate, with intolerance with not allowing people around to think what they want to think, and so on and so on. We are living in a country which you will recognize quite soon will be very close to what you will live in the country. So this film on somehow is coming from the future, your future. <laughs> so I will try to describe how we built such a film. So everything starts, because he's living in Croatia, I'm living in Athens, Ohio. Um, and we are almost on daily basis exchange the emails with million ideas, with characters, with some news from some magazine. So we are playing all the time and we are killing each other ideas on the daily basis. 
So one night arrived email. He said that it's very warm down there. He lives on Mediterranean coast and he can sleep, but he was looking through the balcony and he saw the man, one old professor, who sometimes dressed as a woman going around. And that he knows the woman who sometimes help him when he's in trouble. And that there are some, he thinks that they can play around such a character. So, Two days later, I sent him email saying, okay, if the woman who is helping have a husband and they live in the basement in the same house, and if the main character, old professor, who sometimes dress as a woman, have a father who is very old and needs a help 24 hours a day, what will happen with such a four characters? So, this film is based in the same street where I have an apartment in Zagreb, where I grow up. I know those characters, I know those people quite well. So, for the next six months, we just spent talking sometimes traveling together, sometimes walking, sometimes writing each other. We spent talking about the characters. We didn't touch the story. We didn't touch what can happen to them, how it's... We just tried to build as possible from idea that she is a nurse and that he is a policeman and that he is a Serb and... Uh, professor is heavy nationalist crowd and live with a father who used to be fascist as a young man during the Second World War. So if you have four such a strange characters who don't like each other from the beginning, who are seeing in each other just cliches and they don't want to talk to each other and they are not talking to each other in this at the beginning of this story, who they are, how to build them, that they are not just representatives of some idea or some another cliche, how to play with them. So in this process, you are going through everyone you know in your life, trying to steal from your uncle, from someone you hear about, and you are collecting and collecting information about the character. And you are trying and you make the notes all the time. So we, little by little, those one dimensional characters became two dimensional. And then little by little, they start to talk and walk and they have their own will. And when you feel that they are enough strong, that they make sense as a human beings, then basically you start to plot the story. In this case, I'm talking just about this film because every film in the world, every script in the world is developed differently. You are starting with a small news, you are starting with, you heard the fantastic story, you're starting from the book, so the root of every script is very different. I'm talking about this one, which we spent two and a half years just writing the script. So after six months, we sat together and we produced like 15 page story for the first time with million clear and to us unclear moments. Just you are putting some space holders, okay, maybe here it can happen this and so on. So you got something which is the first time you can see the scope of the story. You can see from the beginning to the end. Do you hear me? Because they are very loud. Okay. Uh, the first next step 
in writing is that you break this 10, 15 pages in something which we call step outline. So for each scene in the film, and film usually, we start first step outline for this film was around 100 scene, the last final script had 168 scenes. So for each scene, you write location, exterior, interior, day, night, and then in one sentence, what is the most important thing in the scene? You have the whole film on 12, 14 pages. And I'm always putting this on the wall. So from then on, this structure element is in the play. Another important thing is you are trying as a writer to have and director to have your cast as early as possible. It's much easier to write for the, fa the concrete face on your wall. And we are always putting the photo of the actors on the wall. And sometimes when you are discussing some line or some situation, you look and say, oh, she will never say that. Look at her. She, she will never react on such a way because it's not in her habit. So in this film, we have basically three main characters. <coughs> And for two of them, I knew from the very beginning, even before we start to write first story, who will play. I worked with those actors, the excellent actors, but my huge problem was the main character, the professor. I didn't have, and I spent a year and a half casting and casting. We already finished the film, the script, and then I finally find him, and then we, wrote two more drafts just to adapt the story for him. So, how we work together, it's very strange to work with someone, not alone. Script writing job is you're sitting alone in the room and you're writing for years and years. Billy Weidler used to say, this is no fun, this is just hard work. This is just from nine to five afternoon, there is no inspiration, there is no music around you. It's just you sit in front computer and you work, work, work. And sometimes it's good and it's going well, sometimes not. So how two of us are working? Uh, I'm structuring the story and the first because I will be at the end alone with the script. I need to start the script. So I structure the story when we have some kind of where to know where we are going. And then I wrote about each scene as much as I know at that moment. Some dialogue, some description of the dialogue, just some notes. Then we sit together and we start to talk about. For each film, usually we are writing between 8 to 12 drafts of the script. For each draft, we need minimum two weeks to sit in one room together from 9 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock afternoon. So it's a huge work. We are starting first few days, we are just talking about structure, about scenes, what can be. And then he's great writing the dialogue. His dialogue is one of the best dialogues I ever have chance to read or to work with. So he'll write dialogue, I will write the next scene. And then he will take and write the dialogue for the scene. And then we'll sit together and read. And usually you are cutting half of the dialogue immediately as you are reading. You don't need this or that sentence. It's clear from me. So editing at the same time is huge 
it's very painful sometimes, but it's something which you need to do. If the scene is so so, we will rewrite. If not, we'll throw and try tomorrow and move to another scene. So in such a situation, we finish the draft in 10 days. Then we are sending overnight to five readers. We have for years developed a relationship with some writers, with my continuity person who is checking all the lo logistic things in overnight. So those people will read script really overnight and send them next morning two pages, five pages notes. You are not following those notes, but from those notes you got impression where it's thin, where it's not working, where, where it sounds artificial and so on and so on. So we have always three, four days to correct, to balance the script. And then we left the script to rest. We need to rest from the script and script needs to rest from us. So for a month or month and a half, no one will touch it. Then I'll read again and I'll try to make a new step outline, new structure where something is missing, what needs to be added, how we need to deal with this, this character we don't need at all, we need someone here, and so on. So we are balancing again. So on the wall is coming new step outline. I will prepare for the new version all the new scenes, and then we will sit again, and again, and again, and again. So. The last version, which we are writing, it's usually like two, three weeks before I start to shoot the film. I have minimum two weeks to rehearse with the actors. I'm sitting in the room with three, four main actors, and we improvised. We took the scene and they are trying to improvise on this theme. Sometimes fantastic world or sentence will appear and you catch this and put in the dialogue. But you give them all the freedom to little by little adapt to the characters. At the same time, you as scriptwriter and my co-writer is sitting with me at these rehearsals. We are stealing as much as we can from their characters. We are trying to adopt each character to the actor as much as we can. Uh, to way of talking, way of moving, way of thinking. So the best characters always appear on the film when they are sometimes glued to the character of the actor. And actors are, for me, probably my most important weapon. You talked about the difficulty in casting the professor in How much time did you spend with each actor when you were auditioning? You spend the day. So repeat the question. Ah, sorry. Uh, how much time I spent with each actor casting him or her? Uh, if you, you are calling serious actors, you are not calling just general audition. So those actors deserved your attention. Generally, uh, auditions are unnatural things for both of us, for actor and for me. Because he's trying or she's trying to present as best. And the situation, someone is just reading line, it's not natural. It's not something which you really can judge the whole thing. So the next thing, you are never judging actor during the audition. You leave tape for a week. Because some actors can fool you because they are very energetic, they are coming in, they are telling good jokes, they are all over you and you say, wow, that's great. And then you watch a week later and nothing of those are coming through the screen. 
and some very silent people who are shy, who are not, suddenly appear on the screen as something which we are looking for. So in the case of this film, we not just rehearse with two other actors who are already cast, but we did costume and makeup complete rehearse because it was such important that this person looks decent as a woman and not a caricature and so on and so on. So yes, it was a long and I cast 10 actors. I called three of them three times, recalled them, which was very unpleasant for them and for me. I warned them at the beginning and they agreed to do this. So it was a very long process until I found the actor who played. So having two weeks rehearsed with them, you are making notes, you are recording all this with few small cameras, you are trying to catch who they are and how they interact. Sometimes you expect the two actors will perfectly interact, sometimes it didn't happen, so what is missing, why, and that's when we finish this, then we start to write the last draft. And last draft is something like Taylor's will do for, you know, little here take and little here, and it will really suit them perfectly as actor. And then from then on, if you are in good mood and they are in good mood, if you have enough money that you can do it without pressure, it's great joy. So that's how the whole thing starts. In case of this film, we published the script and it was for two months best-selling book in Croatia. And in less than a month, in theater in Zagreb, Another film director is doing theater performance out of this script. So, unfortunately, I'm not there, but they will. It's better that I'm not there. <laughs> so, this is some kind of overview. Ask me questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, yes. So, it sounds like the, the process is quite long. I, I guess I'm just so surprised that the actors will stay with you from the very beginning. I have a concept, and then it might be how long? Two years later, or, or, or however long? And then, then they are just available? How, how do you negotiate when everybody is available to do the film? How many weeks? This film, we, we made it in sorry, 10 weeks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> How long it take to make a film and why actors spend two years waiting on you and they are available when you need them. Uh, it's a combination of... Some actors want to work on such a project. So I have some experience, they have some experience. Some of my films did something so exists some kind of in the air that we want to work together. And I'm working not with a lot of actors. So I'm very careful with that. Because, you know, just one, actors at the end are the only thing which left on the screen. In 10 years, someone will watch the film, and film will be watchable if you believe to those faces. If you don't believe them, it can be a fantastic story. You can be the greatest director in the world. Everything can be landscape, everything is fantastic. Music, camera, whatever. But if you don't believe to the face of the actor, that he is real, that he thinks what he is doing, then the film is so-so. So that's why I spent so much time with actors. We shot the film in 10 weeks. 
uh, we reserve the time with the actors, with those two, two years up front, they knew that we'll shoot more or less. We moved twice for two months, but that this period. Uh, I'm not starting usually projects which are not finished at the end, so they have some kind of security that th this will happen. Uh, the main actor cancel everything, including theater, which he's a big star in Belgrade. And he was in Zagreb without moving for 12 or 13 weeks in one piece. It's very important that you don't have actors who are running in the evening to play theater or who need to travel or who have something on the side. They want them to concentrate 100% on what we are doing. It's this kind of strange society of 100 people who made, in this case was very small crew, the smallest I ever worked because majority of film happen in one big apartment. But you want to live with them isolated from the real world. You are building some world and you want them to build with you. So that's why you are selecting. Oh, we have here. So this is, uh, this film has Spanish selling, sales agent and he put this, uh, where it is? Hmm. I can't find this. Okay, it's here. This is a trailer for the film. But you can see it. Trudio si se. Ali ja sam žila ovo kopile, tata. Profesore. Ne znam kako kod vas, ali kod nas i susjedi to rade badao. Jako ste lijepi, Katarina. Vi ste korov. Zato što sam srbi? Da. Vama treba novi ustav. Za državu koja neće biti ni srba, ni muslimana, ni cigana, ni židova, ni šiptara, ni pedera. Muka nikad ne prestane do kraja. Pratite do smrti krivica. Taj osjećaj da se iznavjerio. Jeste li se ikad htjeli ubiti? Puno puno. Ali život je lijep. Ok. Just to see the faces of those people. So. How do you decide on the music? Because I think music is so important. How do you go about... I have a huge problem always with the music. Uh, on two or three films, I change composer in the middle of everything. Um, I'm scared of the music in the film. Uh, because when I, I remember my thesis film at Prague University, I decided not to put music at all because <laughs> I didn't want music to bring emotion. I was believing that I can build emotion with the picture and I don't need those support. From then on, I have more and more and more music. I don't know why, but uh, this one was composed from Macedonian composer who grew up and studied in America, who lives in New York. Uh, I got sample for 15 composer, 
and we listen and in editing room from the beginning when you start to edit the film, uh, you are bringing a tons of music and you are trying to see what can work and it's very clear after half a minute that some music don't want, some picture don't want to live with such a music. So it's going, uh, so it's very hard. In, in the film business exists the person who is music editor and I was lucky on this film to work with probably one of the best American music editors from New York. Enrico Morricone is not recording music without hair and so on and so she's a big name and she sent me a lot of music which I try. At the end when we finish the music I spent two weeks in New York editing the music where to place. The Young Composer, that's basically his first film, but I like so much few of his compositions, which we try with the parts of the film, that we decide to go with him. And I think that he did a very good job. So, it's dangerous. Uh, when you're watching film, you, you want, you know, the history of the film music is strange history of sound and image. Uh, in 70s and 80s, little by little music came back and then generation of Lucas, Spielberg and those put the music from the first frame of the first title to the last frame of the last <coughs> title and they play music through, and music is basically telling the same story as image, just it's supporting the image. If you want to feel sad, then music will say, okay, let's be sad, and if you need to enjoy it, so and so. I don't believe in this kind of music, so I try a little different approach. The music is some kind of sound, background sound, like the real sound, is just noticing that something is happening and trying to, to rise your attention to the moment. So, but it's very painful always to decide because that's the last step for the director. When once you put the music, that's the end of the film. Then you are done. I use one, yes, I, no, no, I use one which he already had, which I fall in love with, and then he composed the rest. It's just one pre-existing and everything else is written for, and it's recorded in Macedonia because that was the cheapest orchestra which we can find. Yes. Here's what I have in mind. Yes. I want it yes. To be like this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, if I'm working with composer on the music, yes, I'm sitting with them. I'm saying, here I need this. Here I need that. Sometimes I'm, I don't know nothing about music. I have no music education. But sometimes I'm brave enough to say, I will need some piano here and some sax here. I think. So I'm going even further than that. And then they are trying and sending you samplers, which is today so simple. When I started, it was not so simple. You need to record really and then to see if it works or not. Today, it's computer can do a miracle. Who, who financed this particular film? And when did the finances come into place? Allow all this to yeah. happen? So, uh, this film general cost is, let's say, 1.5 million dollars. Low, low budget film. But in Croatia, for one and a half million, you can do like here for five or seven million. So it's this kind of low budget film. Uh, in Europe, it's some kind of rule, and a lot of Americans' films are financed from Europe on the same way. 
uh, you first need to go to National Institute for Film or whatever it's the name in each country. In Europe, each European country has such a place. And you compete for the money. So in Croatia, we went on the concourse where there was 72 scripts and they are giving to three films. Wow. And they are giving something like less than half a million dollars. So it's a crucial moment. And the rule in Europe is that you can go abroad, you can go to other countries, but only when you got the money and you approve in your own country. So that's how bureaucracy is helping to bureaucracy around. <laughs> so when you got this, then you go. But because in this case of this film, uh, the concourse for some reason correspond. So we are we're unable to go and we say we are starting on October 1st or whatever date. But until then, we, the creation committee just finish it and give us money. But we miss all the dates in other countries. So now we need to decide to go to the film with one third of the money or to wait. If we wait, it will be almost impossible to put those actors together. So it was a very brave producer, and he came to me, and he wants to make a film with me, which was, this is right now like the biggest producer in Croatia. And he said, let's do it. We will survive somehow. Go and shoot. So we shoot with limited equipment and so on. We were trying, but I have a lot of times. So the only things which, as director, you really need is the time. And that's what makes difference between Hollywood big production and such a production. Uh, I need to produce daily between two and three minutes of final film. They can produce 10 seconds of the film. They can shoot eight months. So that's the difference. So just to finish this money story, it's, but during the shooting, we apply in Czech Republic, in Slovenia, and when in Euro and we got, when you, in Europe you have two countries, then you can go to Euroimage, which is money from European Union, film commissioner of European Union, and you can compete for 18% of your budget. It's very hard to get. We got. It's the third time, but for the last three films I got there. You need to have some reputation, some, so it helps. We got that money, we got then Macedonia, so we suddenly have all the money uh, at the end of shooting. If we have before, it will be under better technical condition and so on, but more or less, producer is very happy because he collects everything. But he was very brave to jump to something which was uncertain. Uh, <laughs> can I describe the process of distribution and advertising of the film? Uh, I will tell you, the film was open on October 6 in five European countries. Uh, we made the tour around and went to those premieres. Uh, and the most important, that it's still playing there, which is huge for such a small film. Uh, advertising, we were lucky with this film that at the beginning, first appearance of the film, because we finished the film through the summer and we got in Montreal Film Festival, his homeland, and we got the Grand Prix of America, like the best film. 
This is the only A-category festival in Northern America. It is the bigger, Toronto, but it's not a competitive festival. So this was quite big, good for advertising, if nothing else. So PRs jump on this, and you have a PR who is writing on daily base to 300 newspapers, making interviews and everything. I gave probably, not to exaggerate, 40, 50 big interviews. Mostly writing from here at the sentence question and then you write six pages answers. So I was repeating and repeating myself. Uh, and then you do pre-screenings with targeting audience, you know, and you are trying to rise the rumor, especially today with all these Twitters, Facebooks, and everything else. Uh, distributors are trying little by little to open the doors in these million different areas of communications today. And when they are ready, then they open the film. This film was open, and then they play Strange Witch. And it works this time. They play, for example, in Zagreb. Usually they will open in 10 theaters in Zagreb. But they decide to play just in one theater once a day to very limited. And the price of tickets was twice bigger than usual. And they're trying those who are really hungry to see. And then, because that's the only, you have no millions like Hollywood film to advertise. You know that in Hollywood, a film costs 10 millions, advertising 20 to 25 millions on top. Wow. Advertising in two to three times what the cost of the film. So no one has such a money when you are talking about independent film. So, you're trying to rise this little by little, and basically, work of the mouth is the only weapon you really have. That's how here will be repeated, because we have one screening and it was enough phone call to theater, they will play now three days. That's how you are rising. Yes, a lot of people. What, what drives it? Is, does the scene drive the location, or does sometimes the location drive the scene? In both. This is a town of a million people. I grew up there. I was born there. So I think that I know every location and every camera position in the town. So we wrote the script for exact location. So it was not so hard to find. But I have excellent art director, young lady who did perfectly. But in this ca case of this film, it was very few locations. I, I don't know, two films ago, the border post, we shoot the whole film on the top of the mountains, very high, like 5,000 feet, and we built there the whole barrack and so on and so on. That was really location scouting and took three months and so on. You have location scouts. Those are the people who are going around. You said, I want this and this. They will show you in three days five options. No. Uh, the, question. the question, sorry. It's, a <laughs> it's a hard to repeat <laughs> such a question. <laughs> if I'm using basic structure, three X structure in the plotting the film and telling the story, or if I'm finding for each film different kind of structure. That's more or less? Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, you are not so familiar with film and uh, 
uh, exists the basic structure of every story for, from Aristotle, from Greeks, until today, and it's three X structure, beginning, middle, and the end. <laughs> and it's very simple, it sounds very simple, but Aristotle will say, beginning is everything from now on, nothing before, <laughs> middle is middle, ending is everything until now, nothing after. So under this structure, 99% of the stories, linear and non-linear at all. You open the character, Hollywood wants to open in no more than six, seven minutes to present the characters. Character is in trouble and then you with characters are going on the journey how to save the world. So, this is structure, but if you carefully hear each other when we are talking to each other and telling the stories, it's quite similar. We introduce the characters, my aunt, my grandfather, they, have, they are such a characters, then you know what they happened to them, and you know how they survived this, and you go on. So, normally, we are coming from different cultures. Our stories are quite different. I learned here teaching when the student from South Africa came and I'm pushing and pushing for this kind of clear structure and she's unable to do it because she's coming from completely different storytelling background. Those stories are fantastic, but they are narrow. They have no beginning, middle and the end. That's how they are telling the stories, this epic way of telling. It's not so dramatic. So, a lot of cultures have different. Anglo-Saxon culture took from Greece and implement directly these three. Hollywood just make cookbook out of Aristotle. So, and we grow up with such a stories, but the culture where I'm coming, which is Slavic and so on, have quite different. Our beginnings are always longer uh, to open the story because you don't know nothing about us. I know all about you. I watch three million American films and if someone is taxi driver in Vietnam jacket in the middle of the night, I know all about the character and it's half a minute. To explain the taxi driver in Zagreb in Croatia to you, I need 15 minutes. You know, it's, it's a different storytelling approach. So that's what makes us different, but I think that the characters are deciding about the structure. Characters are different. Some are very some lives in exterior, some live in interior. Some are very fast, some are very slow. So I'm trying not just to direct them on that base, but to write that it's fit to them. What, how they will tell their story. That's how I'm trying to tell their stories. I'm trying not to interact to put something on the top of them. I try them to live in the story and the way how they are characters. <laughs> when you just gave the analogy of the taxi driver, who is your audience? Is it a European, a Croatian audience? Or? No. If the film is deeply rooted in some part of the world, in some location, in some street, in some building. If it's very local, then can be very international. I think that if my character is suffering and it's enough believer that you can believe him, you will go with him. If I'm trying to adopt my character thinking what you can understand or not, it will never work. Of being familiar with the area, 
where you shoot the movie. What does it mean to be familiar with the area where I'm shooting? Yeah, if you had any like, uh, disadvantages, like uh, challenges, because you are familiar with the area? It's good. It's good feeling. It's, you feel natural as a part of this. That's why I never try to make American film. I'm here 23 years. I will never learn properly the language. I, I'm here and I really like to be here. I'm enjoying being in America. But I don't care enough to tell the story. It's painful to watch our president or someone else, but uh, I don't have still, and I can recognize, you know, in part of the world when I was born, I can look at you and I know after two minutes what kind of beer you are drinking, what is your club, what, you know, I know a lot about you. Here I can recognize that. I'm still a tourist somehow. And you don't want to make stories as a tourist. So <clears throat> the story has a beginning, a middle, and the end. But after you have the film, and you're sitting with your glass of wine watching it, do you ever think, gosh, I wish I would have done this on that particular scene? <laughs> All the time. That's why I never watch my films. <laughs> 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 I am scared to death that when I start to watch my films that I will not make another one. <laughs> uh, you really? You don't watch your films? No. Film? My habit for all my films, I finish the film, big screening room, theater, close the doors, alone, and watch. And that's how I remember this film. Because if you watch with audience, if you watch with someone with a glass of wine, and you will hear if someone is laughing or not, that's how you will start to adopt your thinking about your film. Someone don't like something which you used to like or so. So you don't want to, you want to keep the film as was born, one day, probably, I will sit and watch, <laughs> if I'm brave enough. You said you wanted to rest the script for a month or a month and a half. What magic happens when it's resting for you? Uh, you are not so deeply involved. You got some perspective to the story. That's the most important. Because when you are writing, you are like among the people, you know, when you are with people, you don't see how they change, how they are older or craziest. Or whatever. But when you step aside two months and you came to the same company back, you say, ooh, look at him. He, he changed. That's the same with the script. You want to have distance. That's the reason. You mentioned the bureaucracy in filmmaking in Europe. Are there entrepreneurs that support films, or is all, most filmmaking go through the state bureaucracy? No, no one is investing in Europe as a person, as foundation. That's American way. Europe have so-called minister of culture. Doesn't exist in America. Uh, Europe officially care about the culture. Europe is somehow aware that the culture is the only real defense to the world. But now with growing right wing, the culture is less and less important on daily basis. Because culture can teach us things which politicians don't like. Well, do you have a problem with the state, either the EU or individual state governments having such an important role in filming? Uh, no, under the European Constitution and uh, arrangement in the European Union, uh, the institution which are giving money for audiovisual film and other things needs to be completely separated from the government. They are financed by the government, but they need to operate separately, just to not to be under the influence, which is theoretically. In the reality, they are under the influence of politics. Okay, last question. 
Two last questions. <laughs> I didn't hear you. When did you decide he wasn't going to speak very much? Um, Repeat the question. The question is the father of the main character is not speaking in the film or saying very few words. When we decided that. Uh, we decided in the first version. In the first five, six drafts he was completely mute. And then one friend who reads it, why he's not saying one or two, it will be better. And we try, and yes, it works better. So he's saying 15 words in the whole film. But that's enough. Yes, that, that's, and it's stronger without the words. And the last one. process is really paying off. I felt that all your leads and other uh, characters have delivered very compelling performances. I want to get back to the original question, how you wrote the Constitution, and specifically I'd love to hear you talk about your relationship to the theme. It seems you, you've said that you were entering into the film talking about experience of hate. And then the log of the film is a love story about hate. It seems you've stayed on a target. So I would love for you to speak about how rigorous you are and how aware you are of that central theme, or are you allowing the story to really take you whatever and are ready to give up on that departure point? No, no, you, you are pretending that you are giving characters freedom, but you are controlling them. Uh, the hate was the main subject and the theme of the film because I'm living in a country where every politician and the surrounding countries, not just Croatia, are living out of hate. That's the best way to get the power. That's the best way to control people, is just to develop hate. And in the part of the world where war is every 30, 40 years, it's so simple. You just hate your neighbor. And, you know, hate is always local. You don't hate someone from Nelsonville. You have enough people in Athens to hate. <laughs> so uh, that, that's how it's always nearby. So Croats and Serbs are living together for a few thousand years, and they hate each other. And every politician on the both sides with the same language will play on this hate, because that's the card to get to be elected, to control, and so on. And people, you know, you want or not, but this is on daily basis on TV screens. There is newspapers. You can pretend that you don't want to communicate with this, but this is like some, if you're on the beach, the sand will go in all your clothes and shoes, and you don't know how. That's how hate is entering the people. And when they are frustrated, when they are unhappy, when they want to go out, the first thing is to hate someone and to blame someone. I was not the most beautiful girl in the world because these bloody Serbs ruined my chance to be, or whatever you want. So that's how we live in, you know, and in Croatia lives a lot of Serbs, and in Serbia lives a lot of Croats. And they feel like black people in this country sometimes. So they are unfamiliar. They don't feel comfortable. They are just always scared. They are just always... So you want to make film about why we are so, why we develop so hate. And the whole film is trying to live on some premises that if we know each other, if we behind the cliché which we see in each other, if we start to understand that it's a human being behind these stereotypes, then we start to care about the person. When we start to care, we don't hate.
And yes, that was the team from the very beginning, and we tried to keep this until the end. That's why we spent four years all together <laughs> to make the film. Thank you very much.